Hello Church, um, I'm excited to have this discussion with you guys. Uh, I think it's a, a discussion for a maturing congregation, maturing family to have. Um, and uh, we want this to be an open conversation between us. So we want to talk about, about money, about finances, and we think it's an applicable time to do that at the moment. Um, we, we do feel that uh, the church's finances isn't only the concern of the elders or of um, myself managing it with Juliet, but it's all of our concern since it is all of our inheritance to manage the church, to be a part of the church and to be, um, yeah, to, to make this work, to make this beautiful. Um, it belongs to Jesus, but we are co-heirs in it. So it's, it's all of our concern and therefore we believe we should share this. Um, it's maybe important to say that our books are always open, if I can use that uh, way of saying it. But um, you are welcome to look at our monthly reports at any any time if you want to know how things work and why things work, the, where they work and everything. Um, our books are open. You can look at it. You can just ask me or Jacques and we can share it with you and explain everything that's happening in it. Um, so far as finances run from a centralized system so all the congregations are part of one entity um and there's a uh, yeah there's there's a uh, whole finance team that makes sure everything runs smoothly and then within each local congregation um we also manage the finances and report back into that so um, it's really well done it's audited every year it's a really amazing system that they use um and it's open to you guys. So that is, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, right now we are at an interesting position and we were at this position two months ago and then a miracle happened. Um, but we're at the position again now where we do not have enough finances to pay our bills. So, or we do, but we have to, we had to use our last bit of savings money this month that we had somewhere in the back uh, pocket to pay the bills this month. Um, so we, um, after this month, we are in the open sea and we are hoping that um, the um, lack of, well, the, 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 the deficit we've had on a month to month basis over the last few uh, months would somehow be eradicated with a miracle by God. I think about two months ago, uh, we were in the same situation and we realized, uh, shucks, lockdown's getting us, this is real, we're not going to be able to pay the bills. And we prayed at the staff meeting on Monday, um, and it was incredible. By Wednesday that week, a massive amount came into our accounts, a massive tithe out of nowhere. It just it was amazing, and it actually kept us afloat uh, for two months and made sure that we could cover everything for those two months. But um, those two, two months are over now, and now we um, have used our savings to pay this month. Um, and we're trusting that it that God would do a miracle. So please pray with us um, and uh, trust with us for this, for the church's finances. Um, we um, are not alarmed at all. Um, there's enough reason to be alarmed if you look at it from a worldly perspective. We're definitely not. We've seen the providence of God too many times to be alarmed with anything. Um, we do think it's uh, um, to make use of the opportunity just to share with you guys how we do think about giving, about concepts like tithing um, and things like that. So if you could bear with me, I would like to share with you a few things, a few thoughts um, on this. Um, obviously, the church of God's operational expenses that it has to cover every month and the principle behind it is well, that I want to share with that in mind is that it's all of ours. So if we're a, you're a member of this, then it's all of our responsibility to make sure that this works well. Um, and so the financial responsibility doesn't only rely on a few, but on all. And so therefore, I share it with us all. And um, it actually, you know, it actually costs us two to two and a half thousand rand depending on what you all in, include and exclude but between two and two and a half thousand rand per month per adult member uh, we define a member as someone who frequently attends uh, our Sunday services and small groups and who um, is started into the community but it would um, 
It costs between two and two and a half thousand rand per month per adult member to keep everything we have running. This is the way we believe that church works well. So um, this is what it costs to do church the way that we do it right now. And um, just so that you know, just from a practical point of view, obviously, um, yeah, we, uh, we all earn different amounts and I, um, we don't expect everyone to be able to, you know, pay that amount as a household that's not the thing at 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 all and i believe that's why there's principles in the word of god that make sure um that we can find our way by working through that into how much exactly we are to contribute as a member of a local congregation so uh, coming to concept like tithing um tithing with which literally means a tenth of your income of of your gross income like it, in the old testament it was kind of a uh, taxation system that was used to keep everything running um, in the Old Testament 10% belonged to God and 90% belonged to you um, and under the new covenant there is no legal demand on us to tithe to give 10% away there is no law like that sometimes Christians make it a law unto themselves and sometimes preachers manipulate with scriptures from Malachi and so to make you feel that you're going to you know, something's going to go wrong with you if you don't tithe, you know, and it feels like it needs to be 10% exactly, or at least that or more, otherwise there's going to be problems. Um, it's not a legal demand, um, as we are not under the law, but under the perfect law of liberty. But because we are sons and daughters in the house, we take ownership of it, and taking ownership of something is a much stronger motivator um, than what uh, law is. So you have no lawful obligation to um, tithe but you do inherit this as part of your inheritance and you call to look after this with us so it's not 10 percent to the church 90 percent to uh, yourself but under the new covenant we surrender all so 100 percent belongs to jesus that's how your budget works um, look at it and work on it and see okay god if this is yours 100 percent of it um what do you want me to do do with this and which portion of this is gonna go to the local house um we if we then inquire from scripture to see well what would a good model be to give to the non-income gen generating institution of god then we do th see that tithing was used as that kind of a model and although it's not a law it's a principle and it works well it works so well. If everyone in the church would actually tithe, um, then all operating expenses are usually covered within a specific socio-economic context. Then um, if the members in that context tithe, um, then you are able to, within that socio-economic context, run a church the way that we do. So it just works well. If you've got 30 members in a startup church and they all tithe, then you can appoint someone to run everything, you can have venues, you can do all the basics if we um, hold to that principle. It's just order, there is an order, there's a way in the Word of God that works. So tithing as a principle, not as a law. Um, there's been a time in my life when God wanted to break me free from this burden, this legalistic burden of having to tithe and it being 10% exactly. Um, and so for a while I um, felt God said I should give double 20% which I did for a couple of months and then and one morning I felt this was years ago I felt him say okay now you're gonna give 8% and I thought no way I can't give 8% like I would be robbing God if I gave 8% and he said I want to break this legalistic thing of your life so I gave 8% um, subsequently that went back to 10 because it's in line with principle not law um, so, I mean, if it, for interest's sake, yes, the uh, pastor of the church also, also tithes. Uh, I get my salary from head office, so not from our tithes. And as our tithes increase, my salary doesn't increase. I just get a salary and I tithe it back to our church as well. So, just FYI, um, I think uh, sometimes things like that is quite interesting for members to know. Um, you sometimes wonder and don't ask, so we are very open with everything if you don't want to know anything. Um, we find in the New Testament that Jesus actually commends tithing. Um, he, whenever he's uh, encountered 
with it. I think there's two instances he um, has got no issue with it. He commends the practice of it. He didn't remove it in any way or say that it is something that's vile or that shouldn't be done. Um, and um, yeah, so it's like I said, it it works really well, and therefore we do want to ask that you pray about it. Um, and ask God, like, what is it that I contribute? What is it that I that you want me to contribute? Because that's what I want to contribute to the local house. Um, we know that something right now is not in order. Well, things are never really in order, but something is not in order because we can't pay bills at the moment. Um, so we need to have these kind of conversations and just you know stir hearts and speak principle in and ask to pray, ask you to pray and trust with us. Um, now, in saying that, there are many of us, many of you guys who give faithfully, and that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, and we want to thank you for that. I mean, the way people are tithe in this church, giving this church is incredible. It's really amazing. I mean, to make a, a church like this work in a city like Cape Town where things are so expensive, like venues, and it's just amazing to see how it is actually working so i mean if we were in any other town we would have been way more than fine with our income um but just because we are where we are we are not currently um yeah um i think that's more or less what um, we'd like to share with you right now um i mean it might be helpful to say that we've got dreams we've got we'd like there's so many amazing ministries that and uh, missionary act, um, activity that we'd like to sponsor and get behind things happening in India with the Himalayan network, things happening with Let's Go Logos Bible School in Nepal, a lot of things happening in Afghanistan right now. Locally, we partner with Stratvac and we wish we could have been a greater blessing to them and organizations um, like in um, culture, which looked after um, orphaned. Um, and vulnerable children we want to get involved with a lot of stuff and we want to actually in the future we're looking at buying property in the city to put our roots in and that's also a prophetic statement that we'd like to make so i mean there's there's a lot of stuff we'd like to do um we also i mean we are in a sense understaffed um we this congregation used to have two full-time uh two full-time pastors for one congregation and now the other the Burundi congregation grew to being a fully fledged congregation I just spent six hours with the leaders today working through a lot of stuff so we are two congregations and uh, we've got one full-time guy and office staff so um, it's not a pity party for me I, I love my job to bits but there's just a lot of stuff that we can't do because we don't have the capacity to do them and um, um, so we would like to do a lot more um, and we ask you to partner with us in that. Um, so remember you're free from the legal requirement to uh, tithe, but you are a co-heir with Christ. This is his bride, his body, and uh, we all have ownership of this. And so we serve it with our hearts and our hands um, and also with our finances. The final comment I want to make is one of the reasons why I give and what I find it, um, I've, what I find really helpful about it, is it really tests my heart with regards to finances, which is one of the areas you always have to have to have your heart tested with. Um, it tests my heart. Um, secondly, it puts my faith in God to provide. So currently, just practically for my own life, I we we don't save any money because we can't right now but we would rather tithe than save and from a um, worldly perspective that seems really uh, unwise but from an eternal perspective we think that's really wise um, so we put our faith in him to provide for whatever is needed in the future in that sense so it's always it's a uh, testing of the heart it's a putting our faith in him to be the provider and lastly i fulfill my mandate to uh, be an active and participating member of a local congregation that actually works and that thrives and that can contribute and bless um, so hope this encourages you blesses you please trust with us and we'll definitely share the testimonies of victory with you also awesome
Have a good one. Bye-bye.